Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Today's project um, comes all the way across the country from uh, Monroe, Monroe, North Carolina. So um, we're going to be repairing the case of a, a motorcycle engine case. I believe this one's uh, KZ125, don't, but don't quote me on that. But they're all pretty much going to be the you know, the same. Some, some are a little better castings than others, but um, none of them are real fantastic, but some are better than others. So I'm going to bring the camera in closer and kind of show you what we got going on here. So stay tuned. All right. So this one's not too bad. This one here is just a uh, drain plug um, here for the transmission, but um, and it looks like it's been repaired once before. Um, and then there's, I dug down in there. It kind of looks like there's some JB weld which I'm not a fan of using JB Weld on these. I know people have done them, have done it with success, but in my opinion, that's not really the right way to fix it. So, um, so I got it, I got it. He sent me a new drain plug with it, and it looks like they tried to weld around the edge, and then it looks like they kind of went, tried to go into the threads and then maybe rethread it. So there's a couple different ways. I've I fixed a lot of these over the years, not necessarily just on the drain plugs, but with the uh, Suzuki quad racers and the Banshees in particular, back when I was doing heavy, uh, heavy into the sand dunes, you'd see them blow this back area apart where the counter shaft is um, for the uh, transmission because the chains, that people let their chains get a little too worn or not have them adjusted properly and um, chains would jump off the sprockets, stack up underneath the sprocket, just blow the case out. So I did a lot of those over the years. Um, I haven't done one in a couple of years since we got all, out of all the sand sand duning and, and sold our dirt bikes and everything. But um, anyway, so these can be fixed um, and many times cheaper than buying a new case. Now, this one here, like I said, I'm, I'm, I've got, there's a couple different ways you could fit, go about this one. Um, where this boss is still, for the most part around the perimeter, is still pretty well intact. There's some globules of, of weld on there but it's not terrible it's just the, the mainly the threads you can I can almost peel what's left of the threads out of there so there's a if the boss was in perfect shape what I've done usually is just taking a slug of aluminum and bored the hole out um, and I, I prefer to bore it rather than drill it because when you drill it you can actually create a kind of a triangle in there but when you're boring it you're gonna get a nice uh, perfectly round hole or even, or even use a reamer for that matter. But you're going to get a perfectly round hole and you're going to have good contacts around that whole area. So um, generally I'll do that, bore them out, and then machine a slug to about a thou, maybe a thou and a half oversized, and drill it. Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I'll either drill it and tap it before I press it in. Generally what I'll do is I'll drill it, get it close to size, press it, and, and then drop this in the freezer, heat the case up a little bit, press the slug in, and then you can weld around the perimeter. Then when it cools, go ahead and final drill it and tap it, and you've got a solid repair um, that that thread's not gonna pull out nearly as easily as it would out of this cheap casting because you've got a solid slug of aluminum. So the other way I've done them is when the boss is completely damaged, which I was kinda almost anticipating this one being, is what I'll do is I'll cut the boss clean off of the bottom of the case machine a whole new boss that's drilled and tapped to accept the plug and just weld that boss right in place of the existing one. That's, that's the two methods that I would use to repair this. So like I said, seeing as how this one's actually in pretty decent shape, um, I don't want to put any more heat into it as I, than I actually have to. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run over the blasting cabinet and I'm going to try to get as much of this JB Weld crap out of here as I can with the, with the bead blasting cabinet. And then I'm gonna come in here and just kind of light up on it with the torch a little bit and see how, much, how many impurities are in this casting. If that's really bad, then more than likely what I'll do is I'll cut this boss off, machine a new boss, weld it in place. If it's not real bad, I'll go ahead and just kind of smooth this out a little bit, clean it up a little bit. Then come over, clamp it up in the mill, square it up, bore my hole, machine my slug, press it in there and weld it, and call it good. So um, before I decide which path I'm going to go, um, again, I want to just take and clean this up and just light up on it with a torch and uh, see what it looks like it's going to weld. If it's going to weld out good, 
again, like I said, I'll just make a plug. If not, I'll cut that off and go right okay, to the Okay, so I've got the uh, a bead blast and got, uh, looks like pretty much all of the um, JB Weld out of the way there. Now, on castings, um, I kind of like to set my frequency a little lower. Um, mainly, my, my, my thinking is, is on these, I like to kind of agitate the casting and float those impurities to the surface a little bit. So I, I think I've got it around 50. Yeah, I got my frequency set around 50. Um, balance is a little lower also. Um, usually I'm up around 70. I've got this one, I've got it set now around 66. Um, again, to try to help with that cleaning action. Um, and uh, I think I'm around, around, 100, around 100 amps. So I'm gonna come in and light up, see what it does. And I should be able to tell what, um, what exactly it's gonna do. Whether I'm gonna uh, cut bait and machine a new bung or whether I'm gonna continue on. And I don't wanna get a puddle right off the bat. I kinda wanna agitate it a little bit and see what it's gonna do before I let it go shiny and add filler. All right, so that's actually doing pretty decent floating those impurities up and working the way around the uh, boss there and got some decent aluminum going in. I'm using 4043 rod, so it's putting some decent material back into that case. Aluminum is kind of touchy because you've got to get it hot enough to break through that outer, outer um, oxidation layer, but yet once you break through that, the aluminum itself is actually pretty soft and uh, will uh, start flowing pretty quick. So it's very much a balancing act of enough heat to get through that oxidation, but yet not too much that you uh, drip out the aluminum underneath it. Yeah, building this up pretty good right here because that way it gives me a little more meat when I uh, come in to bore, bore that hole out for the plug. All right, so actually once I got all those impurities out of there it kind of turned out pretty decent so I've got a but now it gives a good me plenty of material to bore this out to probably end up being oh I'd probably say somewhere around five-eighths of an inch easy yeah probably five-eighths of an inch maybe a little bit more and I believe it's a 10 by 1.25 thread pitch so probably only three-eighths diameter hole so I might be I might even be able to go out to three-quarter on the on the slug and once I come in and mill this off flat, bore the hole, press it in, I'll have good aluminum to weld that slug to, plus the interference fit of the slug in that bored hole. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in with a rotary bit and just kind of blend this area down around here a little bit, just to kind of knock off some of the, uh, um, the weld ripples, make it look a little... Let me just make it look so, a little nicer. I uh, got it set up here in the mill, just to a, an angle plate. I've um, got the angle plate clamped down to the table. I've um, got a couple through bolts here. I've got a couple of cant twist clamps on it. It's pretty rigid. I've got it, hopefully that'll show up. I've got it set up here, zeroed out on this surface that I did not touch when I was welding. So everything's set up there to zero and zeroed out. And everything zeroed out there. So now what I will do, um, I've built this up quite a bit higher than the surrounding area. And actually this rib, this edge here, where the gasket goes, was starting to get, some of the impurities in the casting were starting to pop out of it. So what I did, so I took, took, a rotary, I took a rotary bit and went in and removed some of the um, 
the black soot and porosity that was coming out of the ca casting and laid a couple of beads in there. Now I'll come in with an end mill and just bring that up very close to true and then I can finish it off on the surface plate. Um, but when I talk about rotary bits, I just have a small, um, not a real fine, um, you can use the real coarse ones for aluminum. They work great, but when you're trying to do delicate work, sometimes they take a little too much off. The, the, the negative effect is you end up with your carbide burrs getting plugged up. One thing that works, I've used this Formax for many, many years now. It's a, uh, um, like it's like a grinding grease and you just fire up your die grinder, zip it in there a little bit and then go around. And the key with this is light pressure. If you push down a lot of pressure on it, you're, you're, you will plug up the, the um, uh, flutes. In the, uh, in the carbide. So just basically you just kind of almost let the weight of it and you're just kind of floating it around it, shaping it. And then like I said, and then when you, when you get low on the Formax, just put a little bit more on and it keeps the flutes on your carbides from, burn, uh, from uh, plugging up. Works really well. And like I said, you don't need to use, I mean, you, obviously the big heavy coarse ones are the ones designed for aluminum. If you have a lot of material to remove, yeah, they work great. But for fine, delicate work, I found those kind of a medium um, coarseness works great. And then just keep the uh, keep them greased up. So what I'll do now, I've got this surface here leveled, uh, parallel with the table, perpendicular to the quill. So I will come in here and mill this off flat so I can get down to good aluminum that I've put there. And then, like I said, I've got probably, oh, I don't know, a sixteenth, yeah, maybe a sixteenth of an inch of buildup along that edge there. So I'll come in with probably a, a two flute and then finish it off with a four flute very eat gently and get close, probably within 20 thousandths or so of that edge. And then I'll finish it off real, real gently. Um, but it was, like I said, it was starting to, all those little pop marks were starting to come out and that edge was starting to go away and I didn't like the looks of that. So I probably would have been fine, but I just didn't want to risk it. All right, so I'm so, just about ready to kiss the edge of that. Okay, now I'll just walk around it. about 20. It's a little tinny up here at the top, but by taking lighter cuts, it should cut decent. I'll just take like 25 thousandths at a time here or so. It's got a decent finish going on it. Actually, pretty close right there. I think I'll maybe I'll just take a skim cut, take another ten thousandths or so, and clean that up. Speed it up a little bit as well. Okay, so I've got a seven sixteenths end mill in here now, and a lot of times what I like to do is I will just float that in there and then by eye center up so I'll turn my flutes so that they're across from each other in the x-axis and just kind of come down and touch off and get a feel then go over here to the y and do the same thing and just kind of eyeball where the hole is at and I think that's pretty dang close that'll at least get me a starting point That will get me a starting point. I'm gonna look and look, look for an even hole. Yeah, that looks really good. We got nice. I'm taking the the threads are already gone down in that hole, and looks like I'm just kissing them all the way around, which is nice. Beautiful, nice, even, nice, even uh, material removal all the way around that. 
I'm actually going to bring the see if I can bring the camera in here. So I'm going to do it without bumping my handles. Beautiful. Just outside of that bearing slot on the inside. All right, so uh, it's, it's machining so nice. I just put me a two flute, <coughs> excuse me, three quarter end mill in there. Um, brought it back down, set my quill stop, brought the table up to the work up till it just touched, zeroed out my knee. And now I'm going to go, and I measured it before I did that, I need to go down 475 thousandths just to stay away from that uh, bearing retainer, or uh, um, the boss for the bearing. So we'll just slowly creep down on it. It's 440, looking good. 450. Four seventy four and four seventy five. Okay. Perfect. That's good. Okay, that actually looks good. I'll go ahead and uh, Move this out of the way and take a good measurement and we will uh, machine a slug for that. We're gonna put this into a collet here. Come in here and touch off. Set my speed here to about a thousand. against here. See what that first cut did for us. Probably shoot for around 900 thousandths. I think that'll be a good overlap there. That's 918. So let's uh, set the dial back 18 thousandths off of that. Yep, probably two ten thou. Uh, off, so we're good there. Now we want to go down, so we know we're at nine hundred thousandths. Fifty-two. So we're gonna take one hundred forty-eight thousandths off of that. There's a hundred twenty forty.
752.2, right on the money. Man, I love this lathe. This thing rocks. You can hit dimensions so easily with it. All right, so I'm gonna part this off. So for parting, you're definitely gonna wanna slow it down for starters. And then uh, I usually lock my carriage and I stick a little piece of rod in here to catch it. And then you'll want to, uh, oh, first of all, make sure your tool's on center, height-wise, and make sure it's, it's perpendicular to the workpiece. And then just go ahead and feed it in. And I like to cut my, um, or grind my uh, parting wheel at just a little slight angle with the leading edge being towards the tail stock. That way, when you cut it off, it drops this piece first with a clean edge. And there we go. Now I'll turn that around and uh, chamfer it and it should be ready to press in. I'll probably uh, put this, throw this in the freezer and maybe heat the case up a little bit and then uh, we'll press it in. Okay, so I'm trying to work quick here. I've been heating the case up. And I've got it up to a couple hundred degrees here. The uh, slug I've had in the freezer for the last couple hours while I was mowing the lawn. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna drop that thing in now. And I got the drill chuck here, just in case. There's a press, oh, it dropped all in, but it's that last eighth of an inch. So press that down in, there it is. Let me zoom in on that. And now I'll, uh, I'll probably just unclamp the angle plate right from the mill here, mill table here, and run it over the table and run a bead around that. And uh, then I just have to, um, it's a little warm. Then I just have to lap that uh, edge in and I think it's uh, pretty much done. Okay, so now that I've got good, now that I have uh, had good aluminum around here, I bumped my balance up to around 70, bumped my uh, frequency up to about 80, and I'm pushing about 125 amps, and I'm just putting the last of the weld on it here. Back off slowly and that should be it. Oops, a little pinhole. A little pinhole there. Might as well fill that one right here. Okay. I think that's all of it. So I put a little bit of a uh, die cam on here and I got some sandpaper taped down here to my surface plate. And I'm just going to lap the case in a little bit. So there is the completed case. Got the uh, so we 
took and went around and built up the uh, boss around it, bored it, machined the slug, pressed it in, welded around the perimeter, drilled and tapped for a 10 point by 1.25 drain plug. Drain plug fits in, drops down in there just below the bearing and the um, other side of the case it goes through right, I don't know if yeah, be able to see that right back in through there, goes in through and I think we're, I think we're pretty good to go. Um, the uh, where where I where I hit this edge right here, where it started to bubble up, um, that laid down nice. I put some uh, die cam along there and lapped that in. This is all good, so it should accept the the gasket nice and true along there. It might be a little thicker in the webbing right through here where I built it up. It's a little thicker, but the gasket will lay right down on top of that. There's the drain plug. So. Another successful job, this one's done, and you can go back to the uh, owner. All right, so again, another su successful job here in the shop. So um, I hope this was informative. Uh, I hope that uh, you're, it, it at least, least let you believe that you can weld cast aluminum. There's some crap in there you gotta get out of, but I, hopefully I went through the process well enough and showed you kind of what you need to do to um, successfully weld cast aluminum. Um, there's, there's, I don't know, there's, there's, there's really no easy way to do it and there's no pretty way of doing it. Let's put it that way. But it's, it's very, I've welded a lot of these successfully and it can be done, can save your motorcycle cases. Um, so with that, I appreciate you watching. If you like what you've uh, seen so far, give me a thumbs up. Uh, I welcome the comments. If you're not a subscriber and you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and we'll keep the videos coming. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.